So how to draw more consistently even with 9 to 5 work? So you can on this video because you notice some issues in your life. We have 9 to 5 jobs or work, uni work that we have to do. But at the same time, we also want to draw more consistently and improve significantly in our lives. So there are two actionable steps that's gonna make your life more organized and you'll draw more consistently. And at the same time, you will know what to draw as well. So step one, open up Google Calendar and then we're gonna plan the whole week. Okay, so first just identify the the wake up time and the sleep time and then set it as repeat every day you can stop the video and then do it along the way and then after that we're gonna put in breakfast lunch and dinner time and set it as repeat as well so by means of breakfast i mean preparing it cooking it eating it uh, doing the dishes and then brushing your teeth so for me, it takes around 15 minutes to have my breakfast and then about one and a half hours for my dinner. And then, and then after that, we're going to put in the, the uni work that you have to do. So you have to go in these days from this time to this time for your lectures and stuff. So for me, I have to go to hospitals, so something like this. So now we know that there are some places where there will be time for us to spare to use for ourselves so for me it will be studying medicine drawing um, reading playing guitar youtube so something like that and then put it in so this is my last week time schedule it looks scary isn't it but i guarantee you it is very helpful the reason behind it is that it's what I call as brain powers. So every day when we wake up, we have around a hundred brain powers. Okay. If we don't have a plan, then for example, we wake up at six in the morning. We have nine o'clock lecture. Then wake up in the morning. You're quite drowsy. You're still not woken up. You'd be like, oh, okay. So what should I do now? Um, I need to eat my breakfast. I need to walk to my lecture hall. Um, so I probably have to eat my breakfast at 7.30, so I have 6 until 7.30 time to spare. What should I do? Should I study first? Should I draw something? Oh wait, but then I have some assignments that I have to do by next week as well. Shit, um, how should I do this? Oh, okay, fine. So I'll, I'll do some drawings first and I'll do some study when I come back. So this kind of thinking is going to take around three of your brain powers, let's say, and then you did some drawing, which takes around 10. Having breakfast, walking to lecture, having a lecture, probably having a lecture cost around 40 of your brain powers. All right. When you come back, the same thing happens again. What should I do now? There's some time before having dinner. What should I do? You see, your, your brain power are consumed because you are worried or because the, we don't have a clear view of what's going to happen or what we should do. But by this one week disgusting weekly plan, you know that what's going to happen tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And at the same time, you will know that, for example, we have the assignments I mentioned, for example, and then you put yourself three to three slots of assignments each one hour. So you know that on Saturday, which is the last time slot that you arranged for yourself, you're going to have to finish your assignments. So you only have three hours of time to finish it. So there will be some kind of deadline at the same time as well. So overall, it means that you'll be able to achieve what you want to achieve when you start planning the week. That should make sense. So it's a very good way of achieving something and making yourself going on the, the right directions. Also, at the end of the day, you will notice that you have much more brain power to spare. So you won't feel that tired when you draw or when you're studying at night because 
you have saved so much brain powers by planning the things out on Sunday night or today. However, you might not know what time it takes for you to do your studies or have breakfast. You might be the kind of person where you study a bit and then you feel tired and then you did a bit of resting and then you come back for a bit. You don't have a strict study time interval. So go to this website called TogoTrack, link in the description below. It's a very good website for you to track your time. And at the end of the day, you'll notice how well you performed in each day or where the, where the time goes. Because usually time just like that and then you're at night already. So, but this way you'll have a clear view of, okay, so what you have been doing for the whole day and then how much time you spent on having dinner, studying, watching YouTube, that's, that kind of stuff. So now we have a disgusting time schedule for us and we know that what time we're gonna do the drawings, then what do we practice? And some people say that, oh, you need to practice anatomy every day, then you'll be an expert of character design or the poses as well. And some people say that, oh, no, 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 you should change what you practice every two weeks or three weeks. Then at the end of the year, you'll be probably the master of you know, character drawings. So for example, like practice eye drawing for two weeks, um, hair drawing for two weeks, something like that. But I think it's a very stupid idea and I strongly disagree you following this pathway. The reason behind it is that there's no illustrations being produced. There's no time to produce illustrations if we just keep on practicing, 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 practicing. And it would be very boring as well. So pick up a blank piece of paper. So I have my notebook in front of me. We're going to write down an illustration plan with three challenges. Okay. So write down illustrations and then under it, we're going to write down what we're going to, what illustration we're going to make some kind of ideas. So for me, I'm currently making a cyberpunk world, a police woman that is on a patrol with a car behind and in a quite a gloomy cyberpunk city showing the depressive emotions around it. So in terms of the challenges, we're going to write down challenges three, at least three, something that is slightly beyond your abilities. So for me, I don't really know how to paint the texture of guns and vests, the bulletproof vest. So I'm going to write down how to paint the texture of vests and guns. And I'm going to research on that on YouTube or anywhere else. Second, I have, actually, I don't know how to paint at buildings. I don't know how to draw a skyscraper or a house or a store. So I'm going to write down how to draw a building. And then in, inside this challenge, I also want to show the old texture of the buildings. I slightly broken, slightly damaged those places where the police don't really care that kind of feeling so the texture of old buildings something like that and then for the third challenge i don't know how to draw a car to be fair i know how to draw a car but i don't know how to paint a car so i'll put in how to paint a car <clears throat> it's a police car by the way so you have three challenges and each of them you can go in much deeper than that. For example, for cars, I want the car to be lightened by some kind of neon light. So neon lighted. So you can go in more details and then find out what kind of issues you have in each different challenges. And then it's like an assignment. It's like a objective so that you're trying to fulfill all of them, try to learn them. And then at the end, we'll write down four weeks. So the time from, from now to four weeks later, write it down. So with this method, we will have a clear view of what we need to practice, what's going to happen, 
and the dream outcome of it. So in the first week, you will feel that it's quite easy because you know, you're just going through the things that you know. But then on the th second week and third week, it's where the tremendous amount of stress is going to build up. You feel depressed. You feel that you want to give up. And it's because I, you're going through the things that you don't know. But on the fourth week, hopefully, you'll learn it. You'll understand that how to do those techniques. And overall, in each illustration, you will learn at least three things. And you'll be better each time. Each illustration, you're challenging yourself. And I believe that that's the, the, the principle of improvement, which is by challenging yourself, pushing yourself a little bit beyond your ability. So hopefully, by now, you will be more or less settled for the first months. You'll go through a very painful journey. I completely understand. But for some of you, I know that you will still notice that you, you don't have an urge and drive to draw. It's still quite painful to do the drawings. Even though you know that uh, the, the illustrations, like having a clear view on what's going to happen in the future, and the dream outcome that you might achieve with this illustration, the things that you will learn. But just something doesn't feel right. Like when you're drawing, it's just like, like there's something sinking down in your mind, in your heart. And that happened to me. And I know the true reason for it. It's quite hidden inside your heart. And it's because we don't believe that will be successful. And be honest with yourself. Just ask yourself a question. Do you believe that you'll be able to make these illustrations? Do you believe? And be honest. Do you think that you'll be able to draw your favorite artist, what they're drawing? Do you believe that you'll be able to improve so much that you'll be able to draw what they're drawing currently? And the, the answer previously for me was no, but now it's absolutely yes. To overcome it, to overcome this disbelief, it's not easy, you know, it's not easy, but the principle is quite simple that like, to overcome it is to push yourself and try to overcome it by making the first illustrations that's beyond your ability. I can give some advice. So for example, if you're thinking about coloring, you don't really know how to color. Colossal website has a very good lecture by Katan, which is very helpful. And if you don't know how to paint a landscape art or architecture slash character design, Udemy has a lecture by Harley, which is very good as well. Sometimes quite cheap. Or you can go to YouTube and then Go to the speed paint videos, try to slow them down and then copy what they're doing. So this is gonna like help overcome the 50% of disbelief. There are still 50% left for you to break it yourself. But but it's still there. However, look at yourself. And you click on this video, that means that you at least have started digital art or learned how to draw or you wanted to draw. That's a big difference compared to the majority of the people, right? I'm, I believe that 99% of the people don't even really know how to draw. Not to mention that it will be even harder for us when drawing or art is not our major course, but you chose to start learning something that you don't have to. You started this hobby and started this interest and you have came to this video. That means that you have at least achieved something. Right? So believe in yourself, bro. You have achieved at least something in your life. You're much better than who you are, who you think you are. And I believe that you can achieve whatever you want. But the first illustration is very key. It's very important. 
in four weeks' time, you're going to go through a quite an interesting journey of ups and downs. But hopefully, you'll be able to break this belief and get the answer of, yes, absolutely, yes, I can achieve whatever I want. I believe in myself. So good luck, have fun, enjoy the pain and sweat when drawing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.